All right, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Sunday. It is November 16th, 2025, 12 19 in the p.m. out here along the West Coast. We're expecting uh, some more rainfall coming in any minute. Uh, latest activity here on the earthquake 3D globe shows a 1.1 earthquake in the green flag. Quite a bit of deep activity here recently. If you look on the globe here, there's some deeper activity in the Kuro Kamchatka, a bunch of deep activity in the Tonga area. And even a super deep one over here, looks like around the Italy area. Uh, so let's go ahead and start off here with the Kuro Kamchatka Trench up here. Got a super deep earthquake coming in. In the last hour, 4.3, 282 miles deep here into that subduction zone of the Kuro Kamchatka Trench. I'm starting to think maybe we could see some further larger movement out here. Getting a lot of activity here recently. Of course, it could be, you know, just aftershock activity from that 8-pointer point, uh, that eight pointer that struck back here, 8.8, .8, back in uh, July. That was a pretty uh, powerful earthquake there. A lot of aftershock activity occurring, continuing, I should say. Here's a, just the last 30 days, about 89 earthquakes or so, uh, including some decent magnitudes up in the 6 range, bunch in the 5 range as well. But this just covers the last 30 days. If we were to go back uh, back into uh, July, this would be a huge cluster of four shocks and a bunch of aftershock activity. So we're still getting some movement, deeper activity. Watch for some larger potential adjustment upstream. It is a major subduction zone, and uh, there's still a segment down here that's capable of uh, further uh, larger activity that did not rupture during the uh, eight-pointer back in July. That was more up here. Uh, the uh, Japan region, one earthquake here from this morning, it looks like. Pretty shallow up there around the uh, Japan Trench for a 4.5 earthquake. Uh, let's see here. I am going to bring these down just a little bit here because we got some older activity on the globe that shouldn't be there. The Nankai Trough, pretty quiet. I don't see anything stirring up on that for now. The Philippines area, just some some threes and a couple fours stirring up out there. Uh, USGS yeah, reporting one of those here towards the southern end of the Philippine Trench. That's 53 miles deep underneath this area. We've had a couple deeper events down south here at the extreme southern end of the Philippine Trench. Might want to watch this area here for some larger movement because this is one area that really hasn't seen any adjustment yet. If you look at the past 30 days, most of that has been up north here. We'd have to go back um, previous to 30 days as well to see the cluster that was going on up north here. But starting to get some activity further down south here along that plate boundary. Uh, maybe watch for some, uh, some activity stirring up there. Uh, New Zealand, I don't see anything showing up on the map from the USGS EMSE. <clears throat> showing a number of threes out here. A lot of activity from last night and this morning, it looks like. Uh, nothing big, but a little cluster going on there underneath North Island. Watch the uh, Hikurangi subduction zone. Let's see. Two-pointer up in Alaska along with a little swarm going on here along the Aleutian Trench. Not so much for the USGS model, but uh, getting some threes out here. And along with uh, some other smaller quake activity. Nothing big happening for now, but, you know, there's definitely some deeper movement taking place here all over the globe right now. Even a deep one up into Alaska. Uh, let's see, which one is that going to be up here? Well, there's a, quite a few of them that's deep. There's this one right here that's super deep, 155 miles into that, uh, uh, the Aleutian Trench here. Major subduction zone area, 155 miles deep. That's crazy. So it looks like, uh, you know, looking at all these deeper activity, things are could be kicking up here in near term as far as surface adjustment goes. There's that earthquake out around the Italy area. We'll check on that here in just a minute. I want to see what's going on up here in the Pacific Northwest where there's not a whole lot showing up. Uh, the Cascadia Tremor events, the slow slip events here from last night. Well, it's from yesterday. 348 centered here across the uh, south coast of Oregon southern coast of Oregon here that's the uh, southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone they're adding some further stress and strain upstream nothing big for now though one earthquake from yesterday there in northern California uh, the Bay Area got one earthquake right now it looks like a little one-pointer outside of Pacifica that was from yesterday 2.5 2.0 
couple smaller quakes out there really nothing of any noteworthy mentioning uh, but it is on you know a couple different fault systems there around the bay area southern california pretty quiet not a whole lot going on down there just some generally small microquake activity one earthquake there from uh looks like just after midnight along the san jacinto fault zone but that that can see two pointers at any given time out here watching the uh, stress here along the san andreas fault right now it's quiet but uh, one of these days, it's not going to be. Uh, oil fields in Texas still rocking and rolling. Well, one earthquake way around the uh, Flemingsburg, Kentucky area. 2.5. What's going on up there in, in Kentucky? Anything of any noteworthy uh, value here at the surface areas? I don't know if they have oil fields out there or not. Not too familiar with this area. But... Uh, I don't see anything specifically around here aside from a lot of vegetation there green and some houses out there that uh, kind of sits way up north here uh, away from any major uh, potential hazard zones just barely I guess on the uh, end of that one uh, but nothing big happening there for now West Coast well we already checked the West Coast um, Hawaii what we got going on out here? Still pretty good cluster out here across this area. Uh, nothing big picking up for now. There is a number of smaller quakes here, mainly deep, with some shallow adjustment going on as well. There's one up at the Kilauea Volcano. Uh, got to remember, this is going to apply weight and stress up here when uh, you know each eruption happens. They're just adding further um, weight upon the uh, area. But the deeper quakes here, interesting because it's... Uh, Kind of leading offshore a little bit. I don't think we got any major change going on there, but we will double check that. Kilauea volcano right here. Bells are off. Microphones on. My brain's working. That is good. That's the main thing. I can still think. <laughs> I'm waiting on some more rain. That's what I'm doing. Um, deformation data. Let's see what's up here. Yeah, we're still uh, kind of going up here. This is episode 36, uh, lasted for, I think, five hours, and then uh, we're going back up. Not uh, not close to an eruption yet. We do have a number of days before we see the uh, uh, another eruption out there at Kilauea Volcano. I don't see anything odd going on, aside from some a little bit of uptick going on across the um, this area around the hill in the slump area and underneath this area of the Big Island. Uh, let's see, South Sandwich Trench down there has an earthquake. When is this one from? From yesterday. I guess I better re-add the time zone out here because <laughs> I, I put it down below the 24-hour threshold. So we need to keep at least the 24 hours on here. At, uh, that way we can see what's going on around the globe. We got a 4.5 out in the, um, where is that, Afghanistan area it looks like. Just north here, eastern Afghanistan, maybe. Uh, nothing big, but a four-pointer. Looks like maybe they've had a couple four-pointers there. USGS reporting this. Yes, they are. Most of the time, this map will refresh itself, but I'm not for sure why it didn't that uh, just a minute ago. Uh, they got this marked here um, in the India area, north of India. But with all the deep earthquake activity stirring up out here, folks, just be on guard because things are, you know, it, there's a 4.3 up along the Crow Cam Chatka Trench, it looks like, as well. Things are moving. Got deep activity north, deep activity south, deep activity over here around Italy. Let's go see what uh, is happening around Italy real quick. It's a pretty deep earthquake, kind of hard to ignore that one. Um somewhere up here let's see what we got got a bunch of pages of earthquakes I don't see anything of uh there's this one right here this has got to be it 273 kilometers deep for a uh, 2.8 that's a ways away from the uh, Campe Pelegre volcanic fields which sits up here 
Yes, there's some earthquake activity there, but I don't see any major uptick. A couple earthquakes yesterday and the day before and then the day before that. Only one today. No major uptick I'm seeing there across the area. And nothing in terms of any major magnitudes either. These are very small microquakes there across that uh, volcanic field. And uh, Turkey area still getting quite a bit of swarming up here. Cyprus area, goodness, look at all this earthquake activity here. Quite a bit. Nothing big though for now. I mean, they've had a, a couple big earthquakes here <clears throat> in the recent past. Uh, let's see if we can pull this up. I think it's been in the last week. A couple fives and uh, some fours. Has it been, uh, let me see here. Yeah, I guess that's all they've had. Really no big earthquake activity, but a number of uh, fours and fives and a bunch of smaller quake activity as well. It's just off the plate boundary. Uh, historically, this area can uh, they can get some bigger quakes, and it sits, uh, you know, sits in that zone here where a lot of larger activity has occurred historically, well above the five range. It looks like uh, sp space weather activity. Let's see what we got. <laughs> There's that sunspot shooting a uh, shooting what looks like a maybe a solar flare out there on the northeastern limb. That uh, sunspot there 4274 is no longer visible here on the earth facing side of the sun i dropped my flare threats drastically because looking at these magnetic complexity models of these individual sunspots really don't show a whole lot of excitement here <coughs> excuse me come on for some reason this always takes a long time i get it it's a high resolution image but uh yeah, it should be quicker than that little earthquake there on Barrett Southern California uh, yeah so everything looks pretty quiet aside from this area right here notice we've popped up here overnight looks like a little bit in terms of all these different colors indicating that magnetic complexity that a sunspot harbors that one looks like it's growing pretty fast um, if you look from last night here I'm thinking that's gonna be 4280 right 4280 or may, oh no it looks like it's this one right here you guys see that it's in between two sunspots here but look what it looked like last night barely anything and then you go over here to uh, today's latest imagery oh my god they should have loaded faster where's my preloaded uh features at here i just want to show you guys here because it's growing <clears throat> it grew pretty fast overnight so that may be a source here of some sea flare activity, maybe some in flare activity if it continues to grow as quickly as it's doing, but that's it. Nice little sunspot uh, that is currently unnamed and unnoticed, but it will get a name here soon. Uh, coronal hole activity, we do have number 96 here. This is an older image. I still see a lot of people sharing this image here from three months ago, two months ago. You know, just now a massive hole has opened up in the sun and it's just this is just a coronal hole from two months ago it's an older image from the sdo site um, they're still having some issues it looks like with their updating uh, this is somewhat of the latest one 96 is, is positioned a little bit further over here now uh, this is at least a day old you can see it a little bit right there that's a coronal hole but look at this one starting to flare already. That new sunspot producing some sea flare activity. I may have to readjust my flaring uh, forecast there just because of that sunspot kicking up overnight. Really ramping up out of the blue. All right, aurora activity. Not a whole lot here in the forecast, folks. No major solar storms near term for now. Uh, as far as any severe weather goes, nothing severe we got just some thunderstorm activity out here across my neck of the woods as one system's leaving the area that's going to bring some um, precipitation and thunderstorm threat over here we got another one coming into the west coast nothing though in terms of severe weather let's put this into motion show you guys so there's our next system knocking on the door there for california southern california gonna get included in that as well there's a cutoff low pressure system here it looks like towards the end of next week. A little uncertain on where that thing's going to wobble off to. 
It looks like it may try to hit Southern California there, but we'll have to keep an eye on that one. Um, severe weather potential. Uh, maybe around the Texas area, Oklahoma, towards the middle and end of next week. I'm looking at uh, some severe weather setups there later next week. Uh, and then things uh, kind of switch up a little bit. We got some major cold air dipping down from Canada. Um, see how far it stays down there. It doesn't really go down too far, but it's definitely going to be some bitter cold temperatures out there across the Dakotas and the Northeast. Uh, West Coast, for now, um, I don't think we're going to get in on that super cold weather maybe up in the, in the Washington and Oregon but California looks pretty quiet there for the uh, that cold pool of air coming down and yeah, just have to watch and see what happens here <coughs> in terms of this precipitation um, blockage so to speak we definitely don't want to see high pressure out here across the west coast in December that's December can be one of our wetter months and uh, we we've been been pretty decent here with precipitation coming into the west coast even southern california getting in on some of that heavy precipitation um but it you know i don't want it to stop it needs to continue here um a quick glance here at the uh, drought monitoring i know california looks clear look at that not too often do you see that Moisture anomaly right now anomaly right now is pretty well soaked out there across Southern California. That's good to see. Uh, that's at the surface level. The deeper levels a little bit less, but that will fill in. Uh, soil moisture. Look at the surface level. Yeah, pretty wet out there. Uh, Southern California got some uh, decent rainfall, that's for sure. And they'll pick up some more uh, from uh, next couple systems out here. All right, uh, let's see what else is there on this Sunday. Not a whole lot going on in my neck of the woods. It's pretty quiet. Going to stay inside today. Got rain coming in, so I'll just stay inside and maybe watch movies or hang out here on YouTube. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens. Either way, folks, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. We will see you guys out here uh, for the Sunday night update unless something major happens. Watch uh, watch this area around the Pacific Plate here. Deeper, act like I said, deeper activity north and south. Should uh, and e there's e even a deep activity there around the uh, Mariana Trench. So we should be seeing some surface adjustment take place out here soon. Have a good one. Don't forget the member drawing coming up here in four days. Jump on board. We'll see you guys soon.